In this video, I'm gonna show you how to create this grungy, gritty, blurry title sequence with just so much texture, you're gonna love it. It might look scary and complex, but it's actually not that tricky to do. So I'm gonna take you through the whole workflow. But before we get into the video, I wanna let you know about my new After Effects plugin, Shake Sauce 2. It's by far the easiest way to apply shake in After Effects. It has this beautiful new UI, it's super responsive, and you can actually save your own custom shake presets inside of the plugin and use them in the future. I'll have a link down below with a seven day free trial. That way you can try it out 100% risk-free. If you don't love it, you can cancel it anytime, but I guarantee if you're an After Effects user, you like Shake, you're going to love it. But that's enough talking for right now. Let's get into After Effects and break down this insane, gritty, grungy, blurry title. So here in After Effects, this is the title sequence that I created. You can see it has a nice lag to it, the blur, the grain, the distortion. I love this title. I just want to show you guys how to do it because I just think it's something that every editor should learn how to do. All right. So in a new composition, I'm going to create a new text layer and name it like because you guys should like the video if you're watching along right now and then i'm going to use the anchor point tool and hold control and just make sure it snaps to the center that way the center point of the text is in the middle and then also just going to align our title in the middle close the align tool i don't really use it that often and now we have our like text in the middle so getting started the first thing i want to add is just this blur that's in the top left and bottom right here and it's rather simple to do all you need to do is go to the ellipse tool create a white solid that looks something like that and then i'm going to add on gaussian blur and drag that onto the layer and then bring up the blur and you're also gonna have to turn off repeat edge pixels that way it doesn't have this harsh edge here make sure not to have that and then just blur it a decent amount and then i'm going to turn off that layer for now and make a new adjustment layer and bring it below and then we're going to find an effect called camera lens blur and we're going to drag that onto the adjustment layer now as you can see it makes your text blurry like this already we're going to turn off the repeat edge pixels because it's going to do the same thing that the gaussian blur was doing if you don't have it on you can see on and off and we're going to bring it up to something that looks good to us that's a kind of blurry but not too crazy and then to get it to map to the shape layer we're going to go to the blur map and then go to shape layer and then go to source to effects and masks that way it's going to have that nice blur because if you don't change it from that, it's just going to do the source. But if you do the effects and masks, because we have that Gaussian blur on there and it has that nice blur, it has that nice subtle feather to it. It'll, it'll kind of look like this. So if you want to add multiple of these, like in the top left and bottom right, like I'm going to do, let's go ahead and turn back on that layer, go to the ellipse in the contents down here, click control D. It's going to make a second one. And then we're just going to drag it down here to the bottom right. And now we can turn that back off. And as you can see, there is that blur. If you want to go ahead and play around, you can turn it on and off and kind of play around with where they are throughout the process. And you can see how that affects the text. I'm also just going to, on the text layer itself, just add a nice little Gaussian blur just over the overall text. I think it just makes it look more aesthetic, especially when we add all the grain and everything else on, it'll look really good. So speaking of that, we're going to add on either add grain or noise for right now. I'm just going to add noise. I typically use add grain a little bit more often just because I think it looks better, but noise is super simple to do. So we're just going to add noise over everything. I'm going to turn off the color noise and bring it up. And as you can see it's applying the noise everywhere so if we go to toggle switches and modes until you see something that says track mat and take this track mat pick whip and drag it up to the shape layer it's only going to go on the section where there is the blur which is kind of the look i want to go for because i want to make it a little bit more intense there and then we can also just add the noise over the text and just make it a lot more subtle that way there's more grain over the blur areas and less grain over the text, but overall it still has a little bit of that grain. Now on the text layer, I'm gonna add an effect like turbulence displace. That's just gonna give it that kind of like distorted kind of look you saw earlier. Okay, so we're gonna start off by making the turbulence displace somewhere in the negative like 40s, keyframe the amount of it, and then go to like negative 20. That way it kind of like animates in. And then we're going to go close to the end, make it like a positive value, and then kind of just have it go loop back to like that negative area. So then it kind of looks like this. It has this animation in a little bit of turbulence and then back. So it kind of just like loops almost. And then we can go ahead and actually easy ease that. It's just going to make it look a little bit smoother. You can do that by pressing F9 after highlighting all the keyframes. And then I'm going to press S on my keyboard to keyframe the scale. So we're going to have it start off here, zoom in, to like 120, continue to zoom in until it takes up like a majority of the screen and then kind of just a loop back down to that like 100 area. That way it kind of just loops. 
and I'm gonna make sure to turn on motion blur and then also turn it on for the layer. That way it has a little bit of like motion blur when it kind of zooms in like this. It'll look really good. So now that we have it animated like this, we need to add a bit of that grit and grain in the background. To do that, I'm gonna be using my high res clean overlay from my ultimate texture bundle V3. I'll have it linked down in the description. If you're interested, you can add any kind of texture, grain, grit overlay. This one's just a paper texture and I'm going to be adding on Lumetri color to it just to make the exposure a little bit less. I just want it to be a little bit more dark like that. And then I think on the text layer, I'm just going to add a little bit more overall Gaussian blur and maybe also overall a little bit more noise. That all comes down to personal preference. And if you want, you can also go through and keyframe the size and position of these blurs. So if you want them to like grow over time, you could do that and kind of like have it go like that. Sometimes that looks cool. You could go ahead. I'll just show you kind of what that looks like on one of them. So you can see over time, it kind of just grows out like that. You can spend more time keyframing it, but I think it looks pretty cool like that. And now I want to go through and make it look laggy, add that shake, and then also the color distortion. So let's go ahead and highlight all of these layers and then go ahead and pre-compose them. That way they're all under one layer like this. And now we're gonna go and use an effect like distort chroma. I think that's gonna make it look really good and kind of has that color distortion. You can see we'll start it off kind of like this. I think it just adds like a beautiful blur on the grain. We can go ahead and keyframe it, go forward like five, seven frames, something like that. Make it just over the amounts, go kind of towards the end, add a little bit more of that distortion over the time and then we can kind of keyframe it back to that negative number. And that's looking super smooth. I like the way this looks, but I also like when it's a little bit more like choppy. So we're gonna add on an effect like posterize time and just turn the frame rate to like 12. So that's basically gonna like limit the amount of frames like in half. So it's gonna give it this kind of like choppy laggy look and it's gonna look really, really sexy here. And just like that, it has that kind of like animated style lag and I'm liking the way this looks a lot. 